said shit without laughing. It's a shame you should have went. I'm sure everybody had a wonderful time. I'm sure it was a great time for all. Yes. You know what else is going to be a great time, Joe? Trans world. And this episode of yeah. T-Shirt Joe's Fast Custom Podcast, sponsored <laughs> by DWN Productions. Woo! Joe? I don't like rubbing shit in people's faces unless it's my dick and my wife's face. But uh team rough for the win, motherfucker. Oh, team rough. <laughs> <laughs> I swear to god, I was sitting there the whole time. Oh fuck, I gotta turn this off. I was just like, all right. If they fucking give it to these cocksuckers for the third year in a row, I'm going to throw something at the goddamn TV. <laughs> Luckily, the TV is still in perfect condition. Although, I was getting fucking heated. Like Team Fluff, they would announce their guys first. And they're all these big-ass dogs. And then Team Rough, it's a bunch of fucking midgets. One of them didn't even have front legs. No legs. Like, what? Yeah, they brought out all the cripples. He did, he did have a good um, field goal. I mean, sure, but that's kind of a pity thing. Like, oh, uh, Your team you was pity. Yeah, I mean, we, we came out on top, but I don't like all those midget dogs. Don't get me started on the fucking cats. I believe in segregation myself. Keep the dogs and the cats separate. But it's a different time we're living in, I guess. Sure fucking is. Uh. Yeah, it was great. You know, everybody's favorite thing about a puppy bowl is all the commercials. And this year, they had a classic, Joe. They had a Godzilla and Kong commercial. But uh, it was two puppies, one dressed up like Godzilla and one dressed up like Kong, and they were fighting each other, you see. Mm. It was terrific. <laughs> and that was Puppy Bowl 20. I thought it would be a little more extravagant for it being the uh, 20th one, but... I was surprised that shit was three hours. I always thought it was two hours in the past. I was looking at that shit like, got to get on my taxes, boy. Well, it's about an hour and a half in uh, commercials. and uh, Well, the whole fucking thing's a goddamn commercial. It is. It is. Uh, yeah, so what'd you watch then? Damn, Joe. Let me take a sip of this little guy right quick. <clears throat> Sorry, a little agitation on the throat, you see. Yes, I see. <clears throat> so, uh, I got a Blu ray of one of your favorites from last year Candyland, mm. the land of candy. You know, if I can figure it out, though, it'll pop up <laughs> right there, and you can check out the review for it. But this is going to be a Blu ray review. I like the movie, you didn't. It's a uh, modern-day sleazy slasher. No more, no less. Oh, wait, I got to do this, don't I? Here's the front. If I had a slip cover, poof. So let's get that out of the way. Here's the back. Mm -hmm. There's the inside. It has the movie, uh, something they call a zine, which, uh, you know, back in the day, a zine was like a little shitty black and white fucking thing. The fat girl in school would try and hand you. Yeah. But uh, on this, it's just a still gallery. Just a, just a bunch of pictures from the production. <laughs> Why don't you call it a still gallery? Do they call it an e-zine? No. Just I zine. think they called it Candyland the Zine. The movie. That's fucking. And, yeah. And then there's a uh, commentary track on there. It's starting out and it's just like, all right, you know, talking about the movie. This guy, uh, you know, I listen to a lot of commentary tracks and 
it really wasn't like hanging out with somebody in the room. Kind of William Friedkin-esque, if you will. <laughs> mm. And then it jumped forward. Like uh, the commentary track jumped forward to like scenes that were happening in five, ten minutes. And then when those scenes came on, there was like nothing playing over them. And then it would come back and talk about stuff. And then there would be big patches of nothing. This is one of the worst commentary tracks I've ever fucking heard. Uh, it's probably due to whoever made the uh, Blu-ray, like, put the shit together. I would have to believe that the fucking director, like, did a whole commentary track. And uh, people who were putting it together like, no, fuck this. Let's cut this out. Let's do that. And it's a uh, chop to shit. Unless I just got a fucking bad disc or something. But, I mean, it ends where it's supposed to. And pff, what a fucking mess. And that's it. Nothing else on the disc. I paid like 20-something shipped. No, it's probably like 21 and some change shipped. Fuck that. Uh, I feel like I was working at Old Candy Lane. You know what I'm saying, Joe? I was getting fucked in the butt. But uh, if you can find this shit for uh, 10 maybe $12, I would say it's worth it for the movie. But, uh, you know... If you're not putting any special features on a disc and you just have a commentary track, sometimes that could save the disc if it's a good-ass commentary track. It's like entertaining and informative. Infotainment, as they say there, Joe. But uh, they took a fucking hack job to this fucking thing, and god damn, it was a fucking abortion of a commentary track. For sure. So uh definitely don't pay full price. I'm sure just fucking three months go to mvdsale.com and it'll be up there for five bucks or some shit. But uh what a lousy fucking release for a movie that I liked. Definitely don't uh drop those hard earned dollars on a full price for this one. <laughs> and this was from the fine folks at MVD Visual. It sucked. <laughs> I thought my shit was broken. I didn't know what the fuck was going on. <laughs> I'm going through the audio tracks, like making the others I hit a button or something while I was painting on the other side of the room. <laughs> it was fucking retarded. <laughs> That's all right, Joe. <clears throat> I got something here that uh, you might have partaken, you see. This is a uh, this is another Blu-ray release. This is a sensual Blu-ray release from the fuckers at Umbrella and their sensual cinema collection. Hmm. The hit motion picture Showgirls. Have you seen it, Joe? I have. One of the films that I watched this week, Tom. Uh, but I just watched it, I believe, on the Roku channel. Or one of those, you know, and it was the NC-17 version uh, because old, uh, what's her name? The chick, the main chick in it, Elizabeth uh, Berkeley. Berkeley, yeah. Shows her to college after her, you see. <laughs> yes, they did. Um, so it was one of these movies that's on there that says leaving soon, you know. And uh, I thought, well, shit, you know, having just watched Showgirls 2, Pennies from Heaven, I should give this a rewatch and see, and that way uh, give it a whole review, you know. So watched it, and uh, god damn, it's good. <laughs> it's about a young lady who's uh, making her way to Vegas, you know, to... Uh, well, she doesn't actually say that she wants to be a dancer or anything, but uh, she's headed over there, gets her shit ripped off right away because she's dumb and, uh, well, has to start stripping. You know, luckily she meets somebody real quick and says, yeah, you can come live with me in my trailer, you know, and then uh, 
that girl that she's working with does makeups for a a uh I don't know what do they call the showgirls type thing reviews is that what they um, call burlesque it's not quite burlesque because these girls are all fit um I think it's just a Las Vegas show <laughs> yeah I guess it's just a show it was like a name for something but I may be mistaken but uh she's watching the show and she gets fucking stars in her eyes, you know. And she starts doing the little moves that they're doing. <laughs> Shit, do that again. That's pretty good. You know. <laughs> and she's thinking, that's what I want to do. I don't want to just rip, you know. But uh, she's introduced to the uh, the main star of the show, who's a Texas gal. Um, I think she said she was from Del Rio. You know, uh. Oh, she used to work at a KFC, from what I hear. Probably, or a taqueria, or something. No, it was a KFC, K Fried C. Okay, so was it one of those you think that's connected with a Long John Silver's? Yeah. Or it's from Killer uh, Joe, you see a the hit motion William Friedkin movie. Front. Yeah, but uh, but no, she gets her chance, you know to. To come out and audition for the show, and she gets it. She gets a part, you know. But uh, people aren't nice in that world, Tom. People are kind of duplicitous, I guess you'd say. Everybody has their own agenda, Tom. And you know what? She might have a few secrets to hide herself. You know, maybe before she came out to Vegas, she was turning tricks for fifty bucks a pop. And I'm thinking, yeah, this was in what ninety or something. But that's a fucking bargain. Because this chick is smoking hot. I mean, she is quite attractive. And she is naked throughout this movie. It was like a clothes optional thing. And she chose no. No clothes for me. Um, she's fucking awful. She's a terrible, terrible actress. But it's part of the fun of it. And I'm sure Paul Verhoeven saw her, saw her audition for the role, and thought, man, this chick is awful. She's fucking perfect for the awful movie that I want to make in fun. Uh, I I'm sure, because the guy's made some great shit, you know? Like, absolutely, he knows what he's doing. This isn't just some hack. They said, here's uh, some money, just make us a movie, whatever the fuck you want to do. You know, they said, hey, this guy knows how to make a movie. Here's some money, go do whatever the fuck you want to do. And he did. Yeah, this might be uh, the most expensive goof movie that there is. <laughs> um, it's got uh, weird performances from people like uh, Kyle MacLachlan. Is that his name? Which that guy's never a good actor, but he's perfect for this role. You know, he's just playing some douchebag and he's just perfect. You know, he looks like a douchebag. He acts like one. Um Robert Davi is the the strip club uh, manager or whatever. He fucking hey, crazy. you want to keep your job here? You got to suck my cock. <laughs> <laughs> and then fucking later on, she's like, he's this fucking sexual predator, dude. And then fucking later on in the movie, when she's having her fucking debut at the show, he's like the father figure. <laughs> Shit. Yeah, it's... Yeah, none of it makes sense. But damn, this is one entertaining movie. This is a movie done don't, don't give a shit. Uh, highly, highly recommended. You know, and I don't listen to commentaries, but if I had that umbrella release there that you got, Tom, I would probably listen to a commentary or two. I think it's just a historian. Oh. I'd listen to it, but uh, if it was on here. But uh, I think it's just, no. That's right. This comes with uh, that uh, documentary, You Don't Know Me, which isn't very good. Mm, know so, me. Uh, get it? Yeah. Um, I don't know if the Vinegar Cinder release, because they put out one too, right? Yeah, there's like some, uh, I think it's a 4K transfer and some interviews or something, but nothing. It was like, I got to go out and get this now. So it didn't have so I'm cool with the umbrella release. Berkeley. Okay. Uh, yeah, I don't own a copy of this, and I'm gonna no. have to 
that at some point because uh, it is a movie I enjoy. And it was interesting to see old Penny from Showgirls 2, Penny's from Heaven, because she starts working there at the strip club. And then she uh, ends up with the other guy that's hitting on Elizabeth Berkeley, writes a show for her, Tom, a dance performance thing for her. But he uses that same line in old Penny, too, to get her in the sack. And uh, Penny looks a little better here than she did in in uh, Showgirls 2. So, you know, those few years just did a little bit of damage to her. Uh, yeah, I dig this movie, man. Showgirls, yeah. I highly recommend. Yeah, I was going to try and watch it this week, but every time I was going to put it on, it was going to be like in the background in the shop while I was doing something. And it's just like, man, I'm going to want to whack off at some time if I just keep this movie. Yeah, it will grab your attention. So what the fuck else am I supposed to be doing? What was this made for? <laughs> but yeah, uh, like I don't think you mentioned any of the hits like the lap dance that she gives that dude that fucking that was like her job audition, her real one to get the actual audition as a showgirl. Yeah. And then her fucking the dude in the pool like a fucking idiot. Yeah. Or <laughs> when they uh, beat the shit and rape her friend, you know, or when she kicks that guy's ass in, as you would say, revengeance for her friend, you know, those are some ridiculous and good scenes. You know, this is a uh, this is exploitation at its finest. Yeah, and uh, I my favorite part. I'll laugh at it anytime I fucking hear it or see a commercial or this brand mentioned anywhere. It's just like synonymous with it for now. But fucking Versace, yeah. it's like you fucking dumb bitch. <laughs> And plenty of people go to that shop in Vegas and say that to them. You know, you know, they're tired of hearing that shit. Oh, yeah, we never heard that one. <laughs> That's fucking great. Yeah, uh, it's, it's a fucking entertaining movie. But uh, I was saying shit like dumb bitch cinema to describe this before. Uh, you're a connoisseur of these movies. Do you think bimbo cinema works better? Maybe. Yeah, I think that's a. Uh... That is a little more, uh, I guess, sympathetic to the bimbos out there. You know, it's more being polite, I guess. You know. a, a little more PC because it is 2024 at the time of this recording, you know. Right. Uh, yeah, that's fucking awesome. This movie is great. <laughs> it is. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's a very, very entertaining movie. I think uh, I gave it a four out of five. That sounds very, very fair. Yeah. <laughs> oh, shit there, Joe. <laughs> Let me look at this list I got. Ah, yes, Joe. I watched On the Edge, the Fred Williamson classic. This was one that he directed and his wife wrote. That's and, uh, for X, um, I'm sure. Yes, Joe. <laughs> this one stars Fred Williamson. He's a uh, ex-cop who's now a detective or some shit. And uh, I don't know how he gets tied up with this kid. I don't think he's his, his uncle. I think he's just like, eh, I want to influence these young kids <laughs> or some shit. I don't fucking know. <laughs> but anyways, there's this fucking kid who's like a basketball. Uh, uh, what do they call him? One of those kids out of high school that all the prospect that all the colleges are trying to get. A phenom. Fuck. 
So uh, he got caught up. He bought like $2,000 of fucking blow that he knew was cut with bullshit that was mostly bullshit. Just like, oh, shit. Well, it was cheap. The price was right. And it's just like, you fuck face. You didn't even pay for it. And that's why they're trying to kill you and shit right now. <laughs> and his like fucking life coach or his basketball coach is fucking good old Jim Brown. And he's in there dressed like he just rolled out of bed. And uh, his dad is fucking, what's his name? Uh, Superfly, Ron O'Neill. And uh, dude looks like he should be in Brooklyn somewhere flipping pizzas. Holy shit. You remember Chappelle's show where he did Black Gallagher and he was just this bald dude with like hair long like mine and the mustache looked just like that motherfucker, dude. I fucking pissed a little because I was laughing so hard at that shit. <laughs> he looked like a fucking idiot. <laughs> And later on, his little midget ass is shooting a fucking shotgun. Oh. <laughs> it's fucking terrific. <laughs> and then Gary Busey's the evil white guy killer in it. So this and, is uh, backed with the stuff. Yeah, but that's not all, Joe. Because the drug dealer hunting him down, none other than Ice T. So, yeah, all the stars are here. Mm. Uh, I mean, it sucks, but it was fucking entertaining for sure. Especially seeing fucking Super Mario join up with fucking Fred Williamson. And, oh, shit, I didn't even mention Dr. Black and Mr. Hype, old Bernie Casey. He's mm. like the co-star of the fucking movie. He gets stabbed 87 times and just walks away like an ain't shit. <laughs> Oh, fucking terrific. If you like fantastic movies about fucking people knowingly buying fucking bullshit drugs that they clearly don't have the money for. Oh, shit. <laughs> oh, this is probably the fucking wildest shit I've ever seen in a Fred Williamson movie. He has a sex scene with a lady, dude, and he fucking respectfully licks her nipples. He just, like, sticks his tongue out like this. <laughs> <laughs> he just kind of does that. <laughs> and then the fucking camera fucking, like, pans down his body, and I'm pretty sure you get a glimpse of his fucking ball bag. <laughs> So if you want to see the hammer's nutsack, go check out On the Edge. <laughs> this movie was fucking idiotic shit. <laughs> oh, fuck yeah. <coughs> Would recommend. All right. Um... Well, Tom, I went over to the Texas Theater and set up there to sell some shirts or Tuesday night trash. And as I've been doing lately, I just cover my shit up and go in and watch the movie when that starts. And this movie, it was a Valentine's theme. So they showed the classic film Psychos in Love. You ever heard of this one, Tom? Unfortunately, I have there, Joe. I even owned the Blu-ray at one time. All right, well, this is a, it's a low-budget flick about a guy and a woman that are telling the story of how they met and their relationship and, and all that. But as the title implies, they are psychos, psycho killers, you see. Uh, one thing they both hate is grapes. And anybody that mentions grapes, they're going to kill them. Uh, this is one of the self-aware type movies. That's the right phrase I'm looking for. How, you know, like they'll make little comments. Hey, we just mentioned that three scenes ago or stuff like that. Uh, Breaking the fourth wall. There you go. And this is not normally the type of movie I like at all. I don't like this type of humor, but this was done 
earnestly, I guess, and I dug it. I thought it was funny. Uh, it does grow wearisome towards the end because they're starting to repeat the same shit over and over. But uh, before that, I'd say like the first, you know, 50 minutes or so, I was having a good time and I was laughing, you know. It's uh, made at a time where they weren't afraid to offend. And uh, yeah, I dig it. It's got a lot of nudity, but nothing you really want to look at too you know, long. It's kind of, you turn your head a little, eh, you know. Uh, I would recommend, but uh, Tom being an independent filmmaker himself, probably, <laughs> you know, there's there's a bit of jealousy, rivalry amongst those uh, filmmakers, and uh, nobody can stand to see anybody else succeed. And I feel that this film definitely succeeded. Psychos in love, like Tom said, there's a Blu-ray floating around. Why? I don't fucking know. This is something that should just be in, you know, it's not something you can clean up. You know, the, the film quality is what the film quality is. And I think would add to what the movie is, you know, you fucking clean it up. It's just like, that's stupid. That's some stupid shit to do. I don't understand some of these companies, Tom. Hmm. Who do you think put it out, Joe? Uh, I would say vinegar syndrome. That's correct. <laughs> Yeah, uh, it's just some lame, corny bullshit. I'm glad something, you know, got through to you and you were able to find some joy. That's nice. But, uh, yeah, it's just fucking a lame, cornball-ass movie. And if you don't find this type of humor funny, it's just like we say all the time, there's nothing worse than watching a comedy you don't find funny. Especially if that comedy has one of the most irritating songs ever that they sing over and over. Do you remember that one, Joe? I'm sure it still has to be in your head. A little song called Psychos in Love. I don't remember how that song went, no. Well, I'm sure you do. It's just Psychos in Love, Psychos in Love. Hey, everybody, where's Psychos in Love? And they just say it over and over. And it fucking sucks dick. It sucks all the dicks on Suck Dick Hill. That might have been added for your special edition Blu-ray. <laughs> I... Yeah, I don't know about that. If they recut Psychos in Love to make it a musical. <laughs> Probably did. Oh. Now wait. oh, shit. 40 bucks for the fucking Blu-ray. I'm sure I bought it when it was on sale. I wouldn't just, uh, you know, oh, I'm going to pay fucking $34 or whatever it is for this movie I've never seen before. I'll just uh, be a mark and buy it during their sale. Mm -hmm. mm, not no mo. Fool me once. Shame on you. Fool me 28 times. I got to slow the fuck down with this bullshit. <laughs> Yeah, you do. And I have. So thank you. And thank you, Psychos in Love. Fucking asshole. <laughs> Joe, I watched the hit motion picture that everybody in the 90s loves and has fond memories for. Because they grew up watching it, Joe. And this is the Kevin Bacon classic, Trey Moore's. Have you heard of this one? Tom, I don't think I've seen this movie all the way through. Too good? And I've never seen any of the sequels, and it's got quite a few, right? Yeah. No, it's just, I don't know. I mean, when it first came out on cable, like in 91 or 2 or something, yeah, I started watching it, and then, I don't know, something else happened, and I never finished it. You know, it's like maybe I decided to go read a comic or something instead, you know? Mm. Yeah. Uh, well, I'm sure everybody knows what old Trey Moore's is about. It's old rhino worms with little snake monsters that pop out of their mouth and they're going to get you, boy. And there's about uh, eight people who live in this town. <laughs> 
<laughs> so they have to uh, survive the four Tremor worms that's that's around. Ah, it's all right. Every time I watch this movie, I like it a little less. <laughs> I'm going to stop watching it for fucking ever now. <laughs> Uh, it's very quaint. It's like a Shaw Brothers picture there, Joe. <laughs> it comes off like a stage play at points. And, you know, there's only... It's like an old-timey western dirt town where it's just, oh, here's the general store owned by the Chinese guy and then three other people's houses are on the strip and that's the town. <laughs> so it's just all real quaint and you just have these set amount of characters and I don't know it just comes off old timey stage play um you know as the movies go on Bert becomes the main character and he becomes more Bert but in this one you know he's just kind of a guy who likes guns tee hee get it he's that guy mm -hmm. I don't know. Uh, the monsters or the creatures, they look all right. I mean, I remember them looking better because, of course. But, I mean, they're all right, and they do some cool shit for sure. But yeah, it's just a it's just a very okay middle of the road. Anybody can watch this and, for the most part, say, yeah, it was good. I enjoyed it. There were parts I liked. You know, it's not the, oh, yeah, fuck yeah, Trey Moore's dog, woo! Maybe 10, 15 years ago, I'd say that shit, but I've seen it a couple times since then, so. And just everybody talks with their, you know, shitty, I live in a dirt house accent. So it's just like, all right, pig-nosed fucking Kevin Bacon, you don't talk like that, you weird-looking burn victim fuck. <laughs> I don't know. I just, uh, it's very, it's very, yeah. All right. Well, you know, it's like I, I said, I never finished it. Right. I never went back to it either. Cause I never really had a big desire to, you know, it's like, even what I saw, there was nothing that really hooked me even back then to where I thought, Hey, you know what? I should go back and watch the tremor. <laughs> like, I feel like I was really out on something. Eh, I'm all right. Yeah, it's just like you see the monsters and you're just like, oh, yeah, that's cool. Mm -hmm. Right on. Cool. Yeah. Right, we got anything else here or are we done? <laughs> McIntyre was in it and she was some gun nut too or something, right? Yeah, that was his uh, husband, I think. Yeah. Yeah, yeah like it, it's all right. If, uh, you know, you remember loving the fuck out of this movie, probably don't go back and watch it. I mean, now I'm. Had to have been popular enough to spawn all them sequels, right? Yeah. Now I'm kind of, since you haven't seen any of those, I'm kind of wishing I didn't pick this to watch with my mom, you see, because she wouldn't sit through the Dolomite movies if she didn't sit through Sin City. <laughs> hey, mom, watch this good shit. You ain't in enough suffering, huh? Check this out. <laughs> You don't believe I made you watch this, huh? Well, watch this good shit. Terrific. <laughs> Get to that. Uh, so maybe I'll uh, find something else and say, oh, no, there's no Traymore movies, even though I said there was a bunch. And then in a fucking couple months, I'm like, oh, look, I found six more Traymore movies. <laughs> hey, Tom. Oh shit, he's back. Who the oh, fuck is that? Oh. Mario Bava. Thought it was Barney Rubble. So this is uh the Mario Bava collection, volume two. You know, so the last set that was uh one out of five. One out yeah, one out of five that I liked in this set. Well, this one starts out with this classic here called Lisa and the Devil. And uh, I don't know, man. I'll um, let me see if I can piece together what I remember, because uh, was at automatically, you know, after it's done, like 
forgot what I'd watched because it was so uninteresting and boring as shit. This lady is on a tour, uh, I guess, of Spain. She's with a tour group. And the first thing they see is this fucking uh, painting on the wall. And it's like the guys explain, oh, yeah, this is a representation of the devil. And she looks at it, but she wanders away and goes into an antique shop. And who's there but this Telly Savalas, you know, the bald guy that played Kojak. And like the drawing of the devil. So she freaks out, runs away. And then uh, there's this guy that's, hey, hey, stop, you know, stop. And she pushes him. He falls down the stairs and dies. And I guess she's just hiding until nighttime. And then uh, a car rolls up and she waves him down. It's some old fucking rich dude and his wife and their chauffeur. And she catches a ride with them. But their car breaks down at this like castle type place, this mansion, this huge fucking mansion estate. And who comes to the gate to help him out? It's all fucking Telly Savalas again. You know, he's the fucking butler. And they invite them in for dinner or whatever. And it turns out this girl looks exactly like a woman that was there that was uh, sleeping with the kid, the boy, child, whatever the fuck he is, and the father or something it gets real confusing at this point i don't i don't really know because tom it's confusing because it has a dream like quality you see and maybe some things are supposed to make sense but they don't make any fucking sense to me and i don't care enough to try to figure it out i certainly don't care enough to try to read up on it but uh i think on the back of this it's hailed by many as Baba's final masterpiece, Tom. Oh shit, so it's all downhill from here. <laughs> uh, yeah, this fucking sucked. <laughs> it looked good. You know, this whole dream. Oh, it's got some bluish lights. And that's supposed to be dreamy. Get the fuck out of here. Um, so I guess this didn't do well in the United States, or maybe it didn't even make it to the United States. But after The Exorcist made big money, they recut the movie and called it The House of Exorcism. They added in some exorcism scenes or something. But I wasn't going to watch this fucking movie again to watch a recut, different, slightly different version of it. Nope. Uh, yeah, Bob is just not winning me over. You know, and yeah, yeah. If you like Baba, you know, there's something wrong with you. This guy fucking sucks, man. How many more are there on that uh, set? This says eight films by <laughs> Baba. This one is two. So I guess I got to watch uh, six more. But I mean, to be fair, you probably should watch House of the Exorcism for next week. I am not. It's a different movie, Joe. Watching House of Exorcism. Say some time. Uh, I'm gonna have to start a Baba playlist for you. I'll get on that tonight when I cut this one up. Look, it says beautiful, transcendent, <laughs> truly macabre. <laughs> what a fucking pricks! <laughs> oh shit. So would recommend? Not at all. I would recommend that you not watch this dude's movies. You know what I didn't watch this week? A Mario. A Shaw, bro yeah, the Shaw Brothers fucking shit. <laughs> After Ty fucking said, oh shit, yeah, this is fucking awesome. I was just, oh good, I don't have to give a fuck about it anymore. But I should watch like all of them in a day just to get them done with and say, here you go. I'm just keeping the one disc. Mm. Yeah, we'll see. But more I think about even fucking thinking about sitting down to watch one of those fucking movies, I say, hell no. <laughs> God damn. Yeah. I think that's uh, all on my end there, Joe. Uh, well, I got one more, Tom. 
Nice. Because, as we all know, I'm going through the Inside the Mind of Coffin Joe box set from our friends at Aero Video. And I don't really think we have any friends there anymore. But this is- I, I highly offended that guy once. He looked at me like he wanted to punch me in the mouth. <laughs> you know, we were all drunk as we tend to do outside of the old location at a Frightmare. And at that time, I think it was just me and Dave were the last ones down there just bullshitting. And then fucking the arrow dude, like the fucking uh, bald, the big bald dude who runs it. Yeah. Like he, he came up talking to Dave. And I heard him talk like, oh, ball, went all ball, ball. And I said, oh, god damn, it's the battle of the Blu-ray blokes. <laughs> he just fucking looked at me like, you fucking American piece of shit. And then shortly thereafter, I said, all right, Dave, I'm a fucking bounce because I just <laughs> fucked this up for you. <laughs> oh, shit. So, yeah, our fucking good friends. Uh, arrow video <laughs> it was always cool with me um so yeah this is the second disc and instead of having the first movie in here one of the premier trilogies well they have the strange world of coffin joe which is also on this disc but remember that this shit's reversible so this is the movie that i watched here it's called uh this night i'll possess your corpse and like I said, this is the second in the Coffin Joe trilogy. And if you, uh, we remember when we left Cotton Coffin Joe in the last movie, he was dead. You know, he was haunted by all the spirits. But uh, turns out he wasn't dead, Tom. Like the villagers come up, hey, he's still breathing. They take him to the hospital, nurse him back to health. He's they hold a trial for the murders from the last movie, and hey, we ain't got enough proof. So he's back to doing his thing. You know, he wants to have a kid, but he wants to have a perfect woman to do it. So he kidnaps six women from the village and uh, runs them through tests, you know, like throwing like a whole bunch of tarantulas in the room, and their tarantulas are going crazy, you know. And he's kind of narrowed it down, one slag. And he'd think, hey, you know, she might be the one. But at the end of this, all these tests and everything, he has all the other women in some pit suffering. And they're yelling and stuff. And, hey, that's the kind of shit that gets old Coffin Joe hard. So he's going (laughs) to chick. Uh, But she can't. uh, She breaks down. It's like, no, I can't stand to hear their suffering. It's, yeah, I knew you were just a fucking worthless bitch like them. So he's on the hunt again. He's hearing all these bitches scream, getting hard, whacking off. The ladies just looking at him like in disgust. Yeah. Oh, I thought you was different, bitch. <laughs> uh, this other chick comes to town, and it seems like she's pretty uh, merciless, ruthless. She might be the one. She's into him, you know? She goes, Yeah, let's make the perfect kid. And, uh, the villagers, you know, they try to stand up against him. He fights some bruiser that comes in. And uh, they finally hire some assassins to come and take him out. And uh, they capture him. And they're going to bring him back so this other rich dude can execute him. But he tricks them, Tom, and kicks their asses. You know, and, uh... But then he finds out that one of the women that he killed was pregnant thing is and we see this at the beginning of the movie that coffin he's a a guy hauling ass on a motorcycle and he's about to run down a kid and old coffin joe comes and grabs a kid out of the way saves him because kids are innocents you know they're they are the future you know to to make a i don't know a, a new form of mankind that's strong you know so he is like gamera in that he's a protector of children so he's freaking out about this. He goes, oh, I, you know, I killed an unborn. And he, like, at night, this creature comes to his bed. And it's just a dude in, like, a black suit, you know. But it's a tall dude. And he's all skinny and shit. It looks pretty good. And he's <laughs> dragging him off the bed and dragging him. 
motherfucker in a turtle mask, a turtleneck in a ski mask. <laughs> it's like, and you know what? He drags him, Tom. He drags him to hell. That's right. And the hell scenes, the camera, it does a little like shimmering thing, and then everything's in color, Tom. All these scenes in hell are in color, and it, uh, you know, we're seeing all these people being tortured and shit. Some of them are halfway stuck in walls, you know, and there's, there's demons walking around whipping them. And it reminds me a lot of a, of a haunt, but good, you know. Uh, it's like, yeah, that's all right. You know, it's like, okay, you didn't have much money, but that looks, that looks pretty decent. And, uh, well, he awakes from this and he's freaking out and he's still like, man, I, I can't believe, you know, I did that or whatever. And again, I don't know. It stretches on pretty long, this movie. And uh, he's freaking out. He's still being haunted by ghosts and stuff. And and the villagers come and they're like doing a whole Frankenstein bit. You know, the angry villager, angry mob and shit. And he falls in a lake and he's drowning. And he fucking uh, starts calling out to God, you know, to save him, to forgive him. And it's just a big cop out. You know, it's like, hey, wait a minute. This just invalidates everything he did. You know, it's just like it pissed me off, Tom. I've seen this before, but I forgot about that. You know, I think I willfully like rejected it from my memory. Like there's no way Cotton Coffin Joe would turn to God, you know, even at his death. You know, it is very, very disappointing. But uh that's all I watched on this disc. I ran out of time and didn't get to watch any of the uh, special features or the second one, second feature on this, which is The Strange World of Coffin Joe. I think I've seen that before, too, but I don't remember what it is. Uh, so I'll go through this and that movie this week and uh, see what's new and see what's archival, which is how they say, uh, oh, yeah, this shit was on other discs. You know, it's just a fancy way to say that fucking shit. So, yeah, if you could for next week, uh, for the uh, 32 people who are interested, let them know what else is uh, on the disc along with uh, that other movie. Well, yeah, I'm going to go through. And again, just like that last one, uh, I can see no noticeable difference in the 4K restoration. Uh, doesn't well, I'm look sure you're watching a 2K. Yeah, maybe. I don't know. It says 4K. But I don't Do you have, have a 4K player? No, -uh, I don't have a yeah. 4K thing. I don't know. You might have a 4K TV. Those are like pretty common now. But I don't need it, you know. I don't really care about shit looking all fakey and like a soap opera or whatever. Not for me. But that's all I watched, Tom. Yeah, I've never even fucking heard of this dude before they said, Hey, we're coming out with this box set. I have fucking, yeah, like, no idea about any of this shit is, except he has, like, these long titles that kind of remind me of, like, a Herschel Gordon Lewis type shit, and I'm just like, Argh. Well, what's, you know, what's cool is in this movie, he actually flashes that business card that came in the other disc, you know? <laughs> He's like, ah, yeah, yeah, that's the business card. I got a copy of that. Hmm. Put that on a t-shirt. Probably won't. Because <laughs> only three people would know what the fuck it is. <laughs> yeah, uh, fuck, dude. Yeah, I fucking never heard of this shit before, fucking ever. So you haven't sold me into wanting to watch one yet. But, you know, as we go on, that might change. I think they're pretty great, you know, just because he's such a prick and the shit he does is just so ridiculous. But it's definitely not for everybody. Hey, last week when I was finding the fucking image to use for the uh, thing on YouTube, I was just like, oh, Jesus Christ, this is in black and white. <laughs> and speaking of images for YouTube, and I guess people don't even fucking watch shit. They just comment because they're dumb. I used a uh, image from Leprechaun 3 of that dude turning into a leprechaun. 
as the uh, image for the Amazing Spider-Man 2 review. She's like, all right, well, it was said in the review. Right. So, fucking dickhead. <laughs> People are fucking dumb. Well, Joe, listen up right quick and let me tell you some shit about that bad, bad motherfucker Dolomite. Hey, Joe, you ever seen Dolomite? Been a while since I've seen this one. But, uh, yeah, I hadn't uh, watched it in a while. But, yeah, I'd seen it before and I saw it this time. You know anything about Dolomite or how Rudy Ray Moore got started or any of that? A little bit. But what the fuck you know? Enough. <laughs> All right. So uh, Rudy Ray Moore came back from the army and however long ago. And uh, this dude just wanted to be a star. He just wanted to be somebody so fucking bad. So he started out singing. Has some good songs for sure. Like uh, I will definitely every so often put on some Rudy Ray Moore. Crank that shit up. And uh, what is it? I swear it hurts me to my heart. That one, I forget what it's called. Maybe say goodbye to you. But that's a fucking banger. And uh, he has some other shit, too. But uh, he tried his hand at singing. Didn't go great. Uh, he tried his hand at comedy. And after, uh, well, I should say when he was doing the singing shit, he was working at this place called Dolphins of Hollywood, which anytime anybody in these dolomite documentaries and shit they talk about dolphins of hollywood they say oh this legendary place this fucking legendary place dolphins of hollywood i guess some dude who was a record producer had a fucking record shop so he'd sell his shit there and they had a radio station there behind glass so people could watch the shit go on or Whatever. I don't know. If it wasn't for me being a fucking mark for this shit, I wouldn't know a motherfucking Dolphins of Hollywood bullshit. So uh, Rudy Ray Moore was working there, and uh, I wish I could remember his fucking name. God damn. But there was a fucking old hobo drunk that would just fucking come around, and he would fucking... <laughs> he would tell this tale of Dolomite. <laughs> So Rudy Ray Moore invited the guy back to his house. Who knows what they did, but we know for sure that, you know, Rudy Ray Moore, he said, I'll give you some money for soup if you let me record you doing this shit. So he did because he's a hobo. And then, uh, yeah, Rudy Ray Moore uh, stole that shit. <laughs> and took it on as his own. He said, oh, if he's making everybody at the record store crack up with this shit, think about what I can do. A guy who's not a drunk hobo. <laughs> so he takes that shit on the road. Fucking it goes gangbusters. People are loving it. And he says, all right, it's time to make this a fucking movie. So he does. Nobody wants to finance it, so he gets the fucking money together, and he gets the crew together, and he makes Dolomite. So there's a little bit of information leading up to the fantastic motion picture we're about to talk about. Joe, do you have any questions leading up until this point? No, no questions, Tom. All right. <laughs> So uh, Dolomite, it's pretty much the uh, story of uh, a pimp, a club owner. They don't really say. You can make your own assumptions, I guess, who was uh, framed for having uh, illegal furs and drugs in the trunk of his car in his own driveway. <laughs> uh, a couple cops, whites, of course. They say, hey, you open up your trunk. We want to look in it. He's like, what? 
I was just going to mow my lawn or some shit, dressed like a golfer. I, I guess I'll open the... Oh, Christ, where did these fucking fox jackets and blow come from? That shit ain't mine, so they arrest him, and he's in jail now. So, uh, you know, I guess they thought he was supplying the drugs to the community because uh, he goes to the warden's office and says, hey, we're going to release you because your nephew died and there's still drugs out there. So I guess it wasn't you. And go and get revenge. And for like two years, the whole time he was in jail, his sidekick, Queen B, who I guess is the madam at his club, She's uh she's been trying to prove his innocence. So she he gets released and she says, Oh, Dolomite, I'm so happy. And they go out and uh kill white people. <laughs> so yeah, so the governor and the warden both agreed that they were gonna give Dolomite a chance to go out and prove his innocence, as so often happens. When people are in prison, you know. Uh, A lot of movies have this fucking premise, though. Hey, you're in prison, but we need you to do shit. Go prove your innocence. Um, so this other guy, Willie Green, has played by that bad, bad Derville Martin. He has taken over the streets, and he's the one flooding the place up with drugs. He's taken over Dolomite's old club. Uh, yeah, he's just a bad guy. And Derville Martin is the one who directed this movie, and uh, from what was said, he didn't give a fuck. Uh, most of the people making this movie didn't think shit was going to happen. And uh, they were just collecting a paycheck until the money ran out, just doing whatever, half-assing it. Supposedly, Derville Martin would show up drunk on vodka, drinking fucking vodka all the goddamn time. So, you know, uh, <clears throat> yeah. <laughs> So uh Dolomite, he's uh he you know he's just trying to get back what his what's his. He wants the uh club back, he wants revenge, even though he really doesn't, and that just kind of falls off. <laughs> he just gets out of prison and starts living life normally, just shooting motherfuckers with disregard for him being like out on this secret parole or some shit that only three people know about. <laughs> He's literally just shooting motherfuckers left and right. And then he has this army of prostitute and prostitute assassins who's lopping off motherfuckers' cocks. <laughs> and we get to see a little bit of what his club was like. You know, we get to see some of the performances that go on in this club, Tom. Including old Dolomite himself, you know, who goes out. And this is uh, Rudy Ray Moore's bit was to do his... Uh, Tell little stories in rhyme, little funny stories, anecdotes or something. They're uh, called uh, toasts. And Joe, this is going to surprise you, but uh, a lot of the shit he was saying, like the signifying monkey and shine in the great Titanic, uh, it's all old shit people were telling for years, and he just took that too. Did he have a, an original bone in his body? I don't know, but he made me laugh when he did the shit. This movie is very ineptly made, <laughs> uh, but to me, that's part of its charm. You know, that uh, uh, I don't think any of that was done on purpose, you know, for laughs, but it's... No, Rudy Ray Moore and Jerry Jones was fucking, you know, trying to make a fucking, you know, a good-ass movie. For the street loving people, yeah, they just didn't know what the hell they were doing, and uh, but the movie, because of that, I think uh, it's got a lot of charm to it, and 
and it it makes me laugh, man. It's some funny shit, you know. And he's uh he's great as the character of Dolomite, you know, just the baddest motherfucker to ever walk the streets, you know. And he's got a heart of gold. He wants what's best for the community, for his karate bitches, you know, and for everybody around him, Bob. But this movie, you know, takes a weird turn. Dolomite gets hurt in a fight, you know, and he goes to the hospital. And then you got this FBI agent that we were told of at the beginning that fucking does everything else. You know, Dolomite's missing for a little while, which I I didn't remember that. And I just still think that's a that's a little bit weird that this guy's given the limelight, you know, in a movie name of Dolomite. Uh, it's Jerry Jones, and he wrote it. Mm. <laughs> uh, Dolomite said, hey, I love your script. Write yourself into the movie. And he said, all right, I will. So there's your explanation to that. <laughs> it was odd. It, I feel it disrupted the flow of the movie, Tom. Yeah. I mean, that's part of its charm, though. Let me ask you this, because uh, there's two cuts of the movie. The one that's most widely available, there's fucking boom mics everywhere. Every shot, you just look, and a boom mic's peeking out somewhere. I didn't and see that. Okay, where did you watch it? Uh, Tubi. Okay. Uh, where do we go? This one that Vinegar Syndrome put out... Uh, I don't know. It could be fucking 10 years ago now. Fucking, I don't know, but it is out of print, so you can't really get it now unless you, like a retailer or something, doesn't matter. But uh, that was the first time that uh, the movie was actually presented in its proper aspect ratio. So, I mean, the print was fucked. That's why all the releases, you've seen the boom mic. And it wasn't fucking cropped right. So, I mean, technically, it was shot correct. It just wasn't processed correct, if that's the fucking uh, word for it or anything. But uh, Yeah, the it, piss, uh, piss leg girl, she popped up before the movie started. So what that is the cut that's on, uh, on Tubi. Right on. Uh, and that disc has both cuts on it. If you want the original boom mic cut, as they call it, that's on there. If you want the uh, proper aspect ratio cut, that is on there, too. So I've I, seen both. But I have the old uh, DVD. Xenon? Xenon, there you go. Yeah, they released that shit two, three times. I still have a set with this one. I think it's a Dolomite Total Experience that has fucking... Everything on it that is definitely the uh boom mic cut, but uh, you know, if you're just watching the movie to laugh and giggle and you don't really give a shit about Rudy Ray more, then yeah, watch the fucking boom mic cut because that's what the fuck you're there for. But uh, like it doesn't bother me which cut I watch now. The last few times I watched that Blu ray, so it automatically goes to the proper one, but uh. Yeah, it all depends on what you're trying to get out of the movie. I actually like the movie and the independent spirit behind it. Just like, God damn it, nobody else is going to make the shit I want to make, so I'm going to fucking make it. You know, depending on who you are, you say this movie's a piece of shit. You say it's fucking entertaining. Both are, you know, I can understand both arguments, but. It is what it is. I think it's uh, good shit, worth watching. My least favorite out of the four core Dolomite movies, but still, it's fucking fun. I had what had fun time watching it. Put it on in the shop. Fucking, uh, he's bad. Man's out of sight. Every time that comes on, I'm dick dancing around the shop, not getting work done. <laughs> good stuff. Yeah, I agree. It's it's a uh, like I said, it's got charm. It's it's a lot of fun. There's some uh, lines that are just fucking, you know, make you crack up. You know, it's some some good shit. It is uh, definitely a a movie of its time. I dig it. Nah, 
the book we'll be referencing for the next few weeks. What the fuck is it called? Uh, thank you for letting me be myself. Rudy Ray Moore book. I think these are almost sold out or holy shit. I don't think that's fucking right. Down there, it says available on 8-track or cassette. I think that's a cute little thing. But if there's an audio book version of this fucking thing, <laughs> I'm sure it's the commentary track. So, fuck that I said anything. But uh, the end of this movie, when Willie Green gets killed, you say, well, what the fuck happened here? And that's because the MPAA said, oh, no, that looked too real. You have to cut this out. So what Dolomite did, he punched Willie Green through the stomach and pulled his guts out. Like you just see him punching him and then him wiping blood on his shirt. So uh, there is a surviving image of Willie Green after he got his stomach punched and his guts ripped out. So. That is how he met his demise. He just didn't get some fucking weird punch, and then all of a sudden, Dolomite's hands fucking bloody as shit. So, there's that. But yeah, it's good shit. Uh, for the next few weeks, I'll be like, yeah, I would recommend watch this shit. You're a fucking racist if you don't. How about that, you piece of shit? <laughs> but yeah, it's... uh. Definitely good shit, but like I said, not my favorite. However, next week is my favorite Rudy Ray Moore movie. Not only that, but it is in my top 10 movies of all time. So can't wait, Joe. Human Tornado. The Human Tornado! I got a poster of it right there. <laughs> hey, Joe. You like bitches getting their comeuppance? No. You know, uh, as usual, I read three different uh, Spider-Man titles and didn't like any of them this month. Um, uh, Marvel team up. Uh, he's teamed up with the Black Widow still and, you know, and mm -hmm. I don't know, Nick Fury comes out and I don't know. <laughs> Uh, Boomerang comes out and they're all fighting or whatever. It, it's pointless. It's stupid. Over in Peter Parker's spectacular Spider-Man's uh, what's going on there? I don't know. A new villain appears. You know, there's like a reptilian a creature going around and who happens to be at the university but old Dr. Connors, Tom. But it turns out not to be the lizard. It is a new villain uh called the iguana <laughs> and that's how uh that's the big reveal the big cliffhanger it's the iguana and then finally amazing spider-man's you know uh, uh, hi, you. sitting in the ghetto thinking about yeah okay so uh the black cat had broke her dad we don't know that yet but that's gonna come out uh that <laughs> she broke her dad Broke him out of <laughs> die at home, and uh, Spider-Man's uh, I don't know. Uh, Ned Leeds comes up with the uh, with old what's her name, Betty Brant Leeds, yeah, and saying, "Hey, you're gonna quit fucking around with her, and, you know, just tell her that y'all are done." And Peter thinks, "Well, yeah, this is my opportunity. Hey, we're dumb bitch. I was just using you." You know, I was just sticking it to you because old Mary Jane had left. How do you think of that? She slaps him. She's real hurt. Everybody saw him do it. And everybody thinks, man, what a prick this guy is. You know, and they just burn off. So, you know, he's not done being a prick. So he hunts down the old black cat, gives her some shit, and uh, kills her. Kills her <laughs> off the bridge. Hey, that's what he does with his women. And, uh, oh, I got a hurt arm. I got to let you go, but I'll shoot out a little web that looks like a hand. Yeah. Uh, the black cat's dad dies at home, and then uh, an old letter is sent to uh, to Peter Parker letting him know that Aunt May is 
dead that she died there in the nursing home oh shit we're done with her guess we'll never see her again tom we'll find out next week and god damn this sucked yeah it was okay <laughs> wasn't <laughs> terrific but at least shit happened that may or may not have stakes <laughs> It's better than just, hey, we're on a movie set. Or, hey, am I the clone? Or is that the guy who made the clone? Or, hey, here's a villain we're just doing for an issue because we got nothing else. I mean, at least stuff happened, I guess. It wasn't awesome, but. Oh, and Spider Man's trapped under rocks again while water's rushing up. I can't believe it. I haven't seen that shit before. Fucking assholes. Hmm. But yeah, Joe, it was an excellent issue. I agree. <laughs> <laughs> you like lists? Very close to lists that we've done before. I do not like lists. Uh, so our list this week is uh movies with number at the beginning of their title and for number five tom i picked the fifth element it's a girl's movie my number five i have 12 angry men the george c scott version well, at number four, Tom, I picked the fourth musketeer. Why is that, Joe? Because it's got a four. Four at the title. At the beginning. Well, Joe, my number four is the fourth musketeer. Is what I would be saying if I was you. But mine is 10 Cloverfield Lane with John Goodman. He was in Roseanne, you know. He was. He still is, I think. The Con Airs he's in. Oh, there you go. It's about a family who makes blow dryers. At number three, I have the three amigos. Why is that, Bird? Oh, okay. About a revolution in Mexico, I think. I don't know. It's been a while since I've seen it. Rewatch it again. You look like a Martin Short fan. He's pretty good. You watching that new show with him and Steve Martin? Fuck no. <laughs> he did show character that got a cartoon at one point. How was that? I don't know. He had his hair like pulled up. In a little, I don't know. I don't remember the character's name. I think I know what you're talking about. He had like a flannel shirt and his fucking pants pulled up. Pulled up high, yeah. Was it Dick Lee? Was yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that sucks. That's going to piss me off because I know just who you're talking about, that punchable fuck. <laughs> Number three, Joe. I have 976 evil. Probably should have been 1 800 evil, but whatever. 1 800 976 evil. I don't give a fuck. It was okay. YouTube sent me an angry email saying the uh, picture I used for that one was too graphic and they were taking it down. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Here's a picture of an old lady instead. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> At number two, Tom, I have two mules for Sister Sarah. Damn. Two. Is that about some lady walrus Tuscan or? No, she is a. She's a con lady, Tom. And uh, she comes. At odds with old Clint Eastwood. Rest in peace. My number two, Joe, is the homosexual classic 2001 Maniacs, starring Robert English. Hmm. You do like. Every... 
I do like what? Remakes. Remakes, yes. I mm. didn't care for that uh, Herschel Gordman Lewis one, but you know, this one's all right. They gate it up, and I appreciate that. At number one, have one flew over the cuckoo's nest. It's about crazy people. But maybe society is the crazy people, Tom. Maybe. Just maybe, Joe. We're the monsters. Mm. 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 The horrible mm. thought. Well, Joe, my number one was made for jerking off. And that's the Charles Bronson classic, 10 to Midnight, with the classic line, It's for jerking off! Mm, terrific. I just downloaded the uh, audio version of Death Wish. <laughs> Been wanting to read that book for ages. It's only like five and a half hours. You're going to listen to it and be like, ah, I just need some Bronson. Maybe. We'll see. I'll let you know. Mm, I'm all right. Oh, that's fine. <laughs> Talk about it on the podcast, Joe. <laughs> Anyways, join us next week where we talk about our uh, top five favorite movies from uh, when we were in high school. Terrific. <laughs> Oh, shit. I fucked up. Give me a sec. But everybody, I appreciate you listening and spending some time with us. And if you made it this far, you might as well head on over to DWNProductions.net. Masks, bus, props, custom work, all shit that I make. Uh, if you want something custom made, hit me up. Maybe I could do it for you. And I also have a movie on Tubi called Race War the Remake. You'll laugh. Maybe. Go check it out. And after that, head on over to Fast Custom Shirts. Joe, you're here. You plug your shit better than I can, I'm sure. Fast Custom Shirts, we got horror. We got sci-fi. We got exploitation. And hey, we do custom work. If you've got a business or something you're trying to promote, or hey, just get on the website and look at some of the shit we got. I'm sure there's something you want from there. FastCustomShirts.com about how many uh, designs do you think you have over there? There's at least 18. <laughs> what, what are your prices? Because, you know, I, I see shit and I see people charging $30 for a T-shirt. I recently saw somebody have the fucking audacity to charge $40 for a shirt. And I said, help my fuck. This doesn't <laughs> seem right. Joe, what do you charge for shirts over over there at uh, FastCustomShirts.com? I don't know, anywhere from twelve fifty to maybe eighteen something, depending on how fat you are. You know the price. You're telling me you have shirts for eighteen dollars over at FastCustomShirts.com? Eighteen designs, eighteen dollars. Hey. You know, in this this economy, that's still pretty reasonable. Oh, that wouldn't work. But uh, anyways, I hope you guys got some giggles out of this one. I know I did. <laughs> <laughs> uh, have a fucking great week, or I don't know when you're listening to this. It could be fucking... Uh, 80 years from now, and we're both long fucking dead, and somehow you stumbled upon episode 401 of Fast Custom Shirts THC Podcast. <laughs> but anyways, I hope shit's fucking cool with you, and you're doing fucking awesome shit, and, you know, all that good stuff. Joe probably, you know, doesn't want it for you as much as I do, but I think you're all right. And I, I just appreciate the hell out of you. So yeah, dwnproductions.net, fastcustomshirts.com. Thank you. Walk with Christ. But most importantly, 
But most importantly, hey, boy, God. <laughs> it won't let me end it. Boy, God.